All right, pre-cal students, we're starting our last unit. Uh, and this is probably my favorite of the trig units. I hope, I don't know if you'll like it as much as I do, but anyway. Um, so today we have right triangle problems. We, we've, we started way back when de defining our trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, those three basic trig functions for an angle in standard position. So if I have theta in standard position, sine, remember, is y over r, or y is this side over here, y over r. Cosine was x over r. And then tangent was y over x, all right, of, of theta, sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta. Another way we can define this is, is for any right, right triangle is SOHCAHTOA. So SOHCA, so S-O-H, C-A-H-T-O-A. This is just a mnemonic device. S-O-H stands for sine, sine of theta, equals opposite over hypotenuse. So when we're talking about this triangle here, wherever theta is, theta will be a non-right angle. It'll either you know, be one of the two angles that are not right in a right triangle. And then the opposite to theta, in this particular case, this side would be opposite of theta. Now if theta were up in this corner up here, then, th then the opposite side would be down here. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. It's always the longest side. And then next to wherever theta is, one of the two sides that's not the hypotenuse, which forms theta, will be your adjacent side. Adjacent means next to. Okay? So sine of this theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine, C-A-H, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse of theta here, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. From here, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. Notice that would work up here as well. If I'm looking at this small, then opposite over hypotenuse would be y over r. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that's your cosine, x over r. Tangent opposite over adjacent, y over x. All right, so now let's look at the bottom of the page here. Number one, solve for the missing parts. We have three things. We have the 90 degree angle, we have a 25 degree angle here for B, and we have that side C, the hypotenuse, is 14. So we need to solve for three things. We need to find angle A, and then the side opposite A, which is we usually call that lowercase a, and opposite B, we'll call that lowercase b. All right, so let's start with angle A, because that's pretty easy. We know that the three angles of a triangle, and my, my angle symbol looks, just to make it, make, I put the little slash through it simply so it doesn't look like a less than sign, but you don't have to do that. I, that's, I'm just in the habit of doing that. Sorry about that. I know three angles add to 180, and so A has to be 180 minus these other two angles added together, 25 degrees and 90 degrees. So if I add 25 and 90, that's 115, and 180 minus 115 gives me 65 degrees. So there's my first thing. Measure of angle A is equal to 65 degrees. And eventually, you know, I'm putting the N here for measurement, but we'll leave that off as we go along. All right, um, let's figure out what B is. To figure out B, I'm gonna use sine of angle 25 here. So I'm gonna say sine of 25 degrees is equal to B over, my opposite over the hypotenuse, 14. So to solve for B here, I'm going to multiply both sides by 14. 14s are going to cancel on the right, and I have B is equal to 14 times sine 25. For this unit, I'm going to say pretty much entirely we're going to be using degrees instead of radians, so make sure your calculator is in degrees. 14 sine 25, if you put that into a calculator, you'll get 5.917. Desmos has a nice scientific calculator you can use if you don't have one on your phone. Your phone probably will do it if you turn it sideways. Okay, B is equal to 5.917. Likewise, I can use cosine to find A here. I can say cosine of 25 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, A, over the hypotenuse, 14. And again, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 14 and I get that A is equal to 14 times cosine 25, put that in your calculator, 
and you're going to find that A is about 12.688. Remember that it has to be less than 14 because 14 is the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So there we go. Okay, so now we have a couple real world sort of problems here. Number two, the altimeter of a jet approaching O'Hare Airport in Chicago reads 5,900 feet as it passes directly over the Sears Tower, which is no longer called the Sears Tower, but that's okay. At the same time, the angle of depression from the plane to the end of the runway is five degrees, how far is it from the base of the Sears Tower to the end of the runway? So we've got a picture here already. Let's label the things that we know. We know that this plane is 5,900 feet above the ground here when it passes over the Sears Tower. Sears Tower. Okay. We're looking for how far is it from the base of the Sears Tower down here to the end of the runway over here. And so this is our x that we're solving for all across here the base of the triangle here okay the other thing we know is this five degrees and they call this an angle of depression and we're going to have problems several problems throughout this lesson and throughout um, maybe in some in future lessons where it talks about angle of depression and angle of elevation all right so let me just tell you this is a this is important the angle of depression or angle of elevation. Angle of depression or elevation. One side must be horizontal. One side of that angle, if you're talking about angle of depression or elevation, one side of that angle must be horizontal. So for example, if I look at the plane up here, this angle inside the triangle, neither side is horizontal. I have a vertical line here, I've got a slanted line here, neither one of those is horizontal. In order to draw in the angle of depression, I would need to draw a, hor a horizontal line kind of going across here, and then this angle outside of the triangle would be five degrees, okay? That's your five degree angle of depression. Now, if you remember from geometry, maybe you remember, maybe you don't. We have a transversal here. We have parallel lines. The bottom, this line down here at the bottom, the base of the triangle, that is horizontal. This line up here is horizontal. And I have this slanted line is cutting through that transversal, okay? So we know that these interior, alternate interior angles are always gonna be congruent in a transversal. If the lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So if this is 5 degrees here, then it must be 5 degrees here. All right? They have to be the same if you have parallel lines, and we know that this is horizontal, this is the ground, so by definition it's horizontal as well. We're assuming there's no hills or anything here. Okay? So now I've got one angle of my, well, I've, actually I have two angles of my triangle because, because we know this is 90 degrees. This is a horizontal distance here. So I have 90 degrees, I have 5 degrees. And, and I've got, so what I've got is I've got the opposite to the 5 degrees. This is my opposite side. And I'm looking for the adjacent side. So if you think about which of the three sine, cosine, tangent deals with opposite and adjacent, well, that would be tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So just plugging in our numbers here, we would say tan of 5 degrees is equal to 5900 divided by x. I'm going to solve this for x. I'm going to first multiply both sides by x. I've got x times tan 5 degrees equals 5900. And then I'm going to divide both sides by tan 5 degrees. And I get that x equals 5900 divided by tan of 5 degrees. Plug that in, and I get that x is approximately, we're going to round to three decimals, 67,437.5. And we're talking about feet here, so that's that's... I think that's pretty darn accurate. You're going to three decimals and on foot. 
Okay. 67,437.309 feet. All right, let's look at number three, last problem. And this one does not have a picture. At 10 a.m. on April 26, 1998, a building 300 feet high casts a shadow 50 feet long. What is the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest degree? All right, so I've got some building here. And let's put my sun up here. And so the sun is casting a shadow here. All right. Um, the building is 300 feet high. So this side is 300 feet. Um, 50 feet long. This is my shadow. Remember that shadows always lie on the ground. They never float in the air. Okay, the shadow is on the ground, not in the air. And I'm looking for the angle of elevation. Like I said above, angle of elevation one side has to be horizontal. So this would be my angle of elevation. Let's, I'm just going to call that theta. Okay, so once again, I have the opposite side. I have the adjacent side to my theta. I'm not dealing with the hypotenuse in my equation. So I'm going to use tangent. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So to solve this, I'm going to do inverse tangent of 300 divided by 50. Okay, and we're going to round that to one decimal here, and I get that theta is about 80.5 degrees. 80.5 degrees. All right. All right, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email. Hope y'all are doing good. Bye-bye.